You would think the EU have enough to worry about with the glorious UK having slipped from their grasp with Brexit. You would think the EU have enough to worry about with a eurozone in the grip of economic decline whilst the UK roars ahead. UK economic growth last month alone was double what was predicted. You're welcome. And you would think that the EU has enough to worry about with a migrant crisis on the continent that makes the crossings in the channel look minor by comparison. But true to form, the authoritarian instincts of this failing bloc once again come to the fore, this time in a needless battle with social media entrepreneur, the richest man in the world and Twitter owner Elon Musk. Bureaucrats in Brussels have decided to pursue an internet censorship campaign and restrict the activities of Twitter, now known as X. This is a platform which is the only unadulterated social media forum for free speech in the world. And they don't like that in Brussels. The ridiculous accusation against Musk is that by allowing users to purchase a blue tick mark to make their account official, it had misled users into thinking posts from those accounts are trustworthy. By pursuing their Dystopian Digital Services Act, or DSA, another probe is underway, examining whether X or Twitter has done enough to combat misinformation and illegal hate speech. Now, they would say that they simply want to make social media a safe and trustworthy place for users. But it's my view that what the EU really wants is they want the platform to go back to being a heavily censored government mouthpiece. Under the previous Twitter management, censorship was rife with encouragement from Joe Biden's White House, silencing highly respected figures like Dr. Jay Bhattacharya, one of the most renowned medics in the world from Stanford Medical School, whose own account was shadow banned so that users couldn't see his posts easily. And why was he shadow banned? Well, because he dared to criticize lockdowns. And it was under the old management that journalist Alex Berenson, on instructions from Joe Biden, saw his account suspended for the great crime of publishing official US government data about COVID. The same old management at Twitter permanently banned Father Ted writer Graham Linehan for saying that men are not women. Imagine that, your account closed down for stating a biological and scientific fact a fact which, of course, they like to characterize as hate speech. But of course, the truth is now hate speech. Welcome to hell. These authoritarian thugs in the EU hide behind the cloak of misinformation and hate speech as a way of protecting the narrative that they like to peddle, the vested interests that they support, and often the lies that they perpetuate. Now, I'm personally very troubled by the crazy conspiracy theories and the genuine hatred that we see online. It's dangerous, it's damaging, and it's wrong. If you are breaking the law, you must be dealt with. But beyond that, the internet has to police itself. It's not for the authorities or governments to decide what is misinformation or disinformation. It's not for the state to be the arbiters of truth. Not when we've seen such a one-sided partisan and inaccurate characterization of the COVID-19 virus, climate change, and even the cognitive health of President Joe Biden. The lies around all three of which I'll be tackling in my take at 10 in just an hour's time. You won't want to miss it. Now, the man behind this chilling campaign on the continent is Brexit-hating politician and EU lifer Thierry Breton, Commissioner for the Internal Market of the European Union. US political commentator Michael Schellenberger says about him, the plan is to censor independent journalists who debunk EU disinformation. Breton hates our freedom because it exposes his lies. He treats 1984 as a guidebook. He is a totalitarian menace. His goal is totalitarian rule. Schellenberger goes on to quote UK freedom campaigner Silky Carlo, who says censorship is always about power and never about truth. 
We had a lucky escape in 2016. The UK is currently number one in the G7 for economic growth. We have control over our money, our borders and our laws. We are sovereign and have escaped the clutches of this megalomaniac, unaccountable political bloc. This is a free country with a free press and freedom of expression, something now under threat in the EU. Thank God we're out.